Hi, I'm Dennis Weiss for Eagle Communications. Welcome to our town. We're at Great Plains Theater. We're often at Great Plains Theater, but we're not often with Randy West, the director extraordinaire of Great Plains Theater. The guy Bless you, my child. Artist <laughs> things happen. So, Randy. Yes. You've been gone for a while. Where the heck were you? I was off in the wilds of Iowa at uh, of Iowa. the Old Creamery Theater, which is a very fine professional theater in the Amanas yeah. in Iowa, because this year we're uh, opening the new summer season with a co-ventured production of a brand new adaption of Camelot. Camelot. And we started up in Iowa. Uh, Lexi, uh, who's our stage manager, went Lexi up. Weiss. Lexi Weiss, our stage manager, went <laughs> up with me, and uh, she's the assistant stage manager for for this production yeah. up there, uh, working with uh, Sean McCall, who's the artistic director there, who's the stage manager, and having and, a great time. And I a hear. great time. They yeah. uh, went up there and rehearsed a brand new adaption of Camelot for three weeks, and they've been performing up there for a month. So okay. they're, they're doing four weeks. And then they have a slop week when they're off, and then they come down here, and we, we rehearse for a week and open and run here for two weeks. You know, uh, don't want to brag on you all that much, but I thought that was a great idea. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. I, I, and we just left with Amanda Cormack, and I was in that chair, and she was over here, and so people are seeing this a week later, not back to back, but I said to Amanda Cormack from the Arts Council, mm -hmm. partnerships are what? small town America uses to compete with large town America. Right. So you and the old creamery competing with wherever else that right. this show will appear right. in America is a collaboration between the two of you and you're stronger together than you are apart. Absolutely. Sean McCall and I have been dear friends for many years and he's their artistic director, runs a great program at the old creamery. And before I had my own theater company in Iowa, uh, I actually guest directed for the Old Creamery a couple of times, so I knew their, knew how they did theater. And then when I opened my own company in Iowa, I hired Sean as a guest performer a couple of times to come down and work with me. And then when we started here at the Great Plains, last year, the closing of the season was Peter and the Starcatcher. Right. And Sean came here and played Black Stash in Peter and the Starcatcher for yeah. us, because he's, he's a master at farce. I think he's just yeah. really one of the funniest yeah. actors on the planet. He did a great job. And when he was here, we were saying, you know, what we should look, look to do is do something together. Yeah. And so he said, well, can you find a show? And he, I said, well, sure, I'm sure we can. What, what, what interests you? And he said, well, I heard that there was a smaller version of My Fair Lady, which is a, the Lerner and Lowe very famous musical. And I went to explore that, and that is no longer available. And I said, however, there's a guy that uh, went to the same university that I went to. We both went to the University of Redlands. And uh, I said, and he has created a new adaption of Camelot. Do you want me to see if there's any chance that that's available? And he said, why don't you explore that? Well, the guy that did the new adaption, his name's David Lee. He did go to the University of Redlands, but after he graduated from Redlands, was a musical theater aholic, loved musical theater. He went to the old creamery as an intern okay. right out of college. So he did one year at the old creamery. Then he went back to uh, California and went into television. And he wrote for Cheers. And then he created the TV series Wings. And then he created Frasier. And uh, he was not only the creator, he wrote and directed most of the episodes of Frasier for 10 years. Yeah. And when Frasier ended, he went back into musical theater. And uh, he has enough power to be able to go back and cre recreate some of these older musicals. And so, believe it or not, Frederick Lowe of Lerner and Lowe fame also went to the University of Redlands. I'm telling you. It so all ties back to this it, little university. This is a lot like <laughs> horse training, Randy. So... You all circle through the same places right. in the industry right. because there's places in the industry right. where it, it's done well right. or it works right and all that to be true. But for Abilene, Kansas, the fact that the old creamery and Great Plains Theater have cooperated on Camelot's going to mean that when you launch June 8th, right. Camelot's going to be great. The cast is already ready once right. they come here. Right. So we're going to get the benefit of all the little tweaks that I've learned mm -hmm. as I've watched through Elizabeth's time here. The little tweaks that turn a good show into a great show. 
And this new adaption, Camelot was always just a really huge musical. It ran yeah. three hours and 40 minutes. I volunteered it, to ride my horse across the stage and knock somebody off. There you go. They said they didn't need me. <laughs> but it was a, it, it was a lo very long musical, rangy musical, dealt with a whole bunch of stuff that was a little hard to make work. And, uh, and this show cuts it from a cast of 30 or 40 to a cast of nine. And, uh, and, and, and David has taken it into, into story theater, where everybody in, this, in the cast narrates parts of the story. So they jump in and out of character, become a narrator, mm -hmm. which allows the story to move much quicker. And, and he really has honed down on the love triangle between King Arthur and Guinevere and Lancelot and, 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 and the round table. Okay. So it's a really lean telling of the story that literally comes in at right at two hours. So as I walked in today, I saw Mark Warner building things. I said, so what are you building there? He said, well, that's a rolling bed. Right. That's a rolling bed. But it's always amazing to watch what happens uh, in the shop to the stage. And uh, it goes without saying that uh, Webb Home Center is glad that you're doing Camelot and needed a rolling bed. There you go. Because that lumber came right straight from Webb Home Center. Absolutely. Yeah, isn't that great? A and the sets are basically, actually Mark designed the set, and he designed a set that it's a little bigger at the old creamery because their space is a mm -hmm. little larger than mm -hmm. us, but, but, it's, the, but the, it's the same essence of the set, and it's been being built twice, and so everything will kind of seem the same when they get here, and we're redesigning the lights so it'll look the same so it's kind of and it's the exact same cast the same costume same props so we literally produced one show that's playing two theaters yeah okay so that's the opening right. show of the season if we just keep talking about Camelot Dave's gonna go like this okay. and we're gonna be done we got Second I'll, show. Second show. This is the castle summer. The this, castle all summer. three shows right. to have a castle in the summer. The second one is Lion in Winter, Lion which in uh, Winter. is if you're into Game of Thrones, which is pretty hot right now. Is. Lion in Winter is based on the truth. It's based on Henry the Second and Eleanor of the Aquitaine, and and their machinations trying to decide which one of their two sons will ascend the throne. And they had three sons. They had uh, John was the youngest, and then there was Geoffrey, and then there was Richard the Lionhearted. And, and it all takes place over a weekend at Christmas while they're, they're working. Uh, Henry has sent Eleanor into, well, she's basically under house arrest in a castle. And he releases her for that one weekend. And during that weekend, they're both trying to move things around to decide Richard wants John to be the next king of England and Eleanor wants Richard. And it's all this kind of, if you're into the whole political intrigue of, of royal machinations, yeah. that's all about line and winner. Well, well, even though I'm not, I expect to be well entertained here. It is, and it's it's literally even though we know who wins. We do. Yes, we do. Yes, and and but Richard goes away to the Crusades, and, and John kind of messes things up in, <laughs> in England for a while. And and somewhere in there, somebody created Robin Hood. You that's, know? Right. I, <laughs> that's right. That's right. That, that's when Robin Hood arrow. So, and uh, uh, the guy with the big eyes. What's his name? The funny guy. Oh, Gene. Gene. Oh, yeah. Made a comedy out of it. That's uh, right. Okay, so well, all of that. Mel thing. Brooks. Made Mel Brooks. Right. Mel Brooks. Okay, so and and his favorite actor there, the guy with the big eyes. I never remember in Young Frankenstein and. Yes. Okay. The Gene people, Wilder G was not was not yeah. the one. It was so the other there, one. there's Dave knows who it is. Who? Marty Feldman. Marty Feldman. Okay. Right. So there we go. But I could help you with that hump. All right. What help? What help? <laughs> so. The reality of what we're presenting to people today is Great Plains Theater has an extraordinary season lined up again. Again, and then in August, again. we're doing Shrek the Musical, which uh, Shrek is the, the, the animated story that we all know about the ogre who lives in the swamp. Yep. swamp. They wrote a, a Tony Award-winning musical, and we're gonna recreate that with a cast of about 35 to 40. And so it's the most people we've ever had on the Great Plains oh uh, stage. Uh, once again, a whole professional cast coming in from throughout the United States, being augmented with local talent and regional talent. And because right now we have a very hot and involved academy here where we're teaching people 
people how to do theater and do, do dance and do singing. Mm -hmm. uh, we are using our academy and we believe heavily in the mentoring process here. We believe that when you take good talent and you put it with terrific talent, the good talent becomes terrific. I couldn't and, agree more. And so we're taking our, uh, in, in the smaller roles in the musical. The three pigs in Shrek are all locally cast from our academy. Peter Pan is from our academy. And the, the Ugly Duckling and, and these students are going to come and th they start rehearsing three weeks before the actual professional rehearsals locally because it takes a little longer to teach young people skills and then they join the professional cast and so of the cast of 40 about uh, about 12 to 13 of them are going to be local young people. So and if if the history is in any indicator of the future uh, some of those members of your academy that are that were raised and trained here at Great Plains Theater are going to steal the show. Gonna, there are some great moments for them in yeah, Shrek. Yeah. And then the, the, the then we find, we do those three shows in the summer, and then we hold over, and then in December we're doing a, a brand new piece of new work called Not Another uh, Christmas Letter. That's the cool musical. Story. That's a cool story. And it, and it's a, it's a sketch comedy with with little scenes and musical numbers about uh, the. The, the different things we suffer through to survive Christmas every year. And that's, that's a fun thing to end the season with. And that's a new work. Okay. So uh, we have to, you have to give me my just due here. Mm -hmm. uh, Great Plains Theater is one of the most visible, fun pieces of economic development that has been done in modern Abilene history. It is a people generating traffic machine to our community and everybody that comes here whether they come to watch a show or they're one of those 30 actors you're bringing from all over the United States leaves with a positive view of Abilene that the rest of us out here we couldn't buy much less create. Everybody wants to come back. Everybody wants to come back. Right. Uh, I don't remember what show it was and it's immaterial, but one of your young artists last year, I think, and I, they hadn't been here, we, the show hadn't been up yet, it was still in rehearsal, and I ran into them, and I said, so how are you enjoying Abilene? He said, oh, it's just terrific. He said, I just, we go back after rehearsal, and I just walk down the street, and I just enjoy it, so peaceful, people are so friendly. It's a great place. Great place to be. Okay, so, um, Four shows this year. There's a season packages are available. You can go uh, to www.greatplainstheater.com and explore the season ticket packages. Okay. You can give us a call or you can come by and see us at, uh, down on 401 Cottage Avenue. 401 Cottage Street and buy all the tickets you Absolutely. want. Absolutely. You know, um, when this little venture was launched down here, it's been a pleasure as a, as a business person to step back and watch what benefits drive into town uh, you know, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then matinees with the buses coming mm -hmm. in. I'm sure you'll have buses coming mm -hmm. from somewhere this year. I don't really, I'm not connected that much to that activity anymore, but the fact of the matter is, is, is this place is responsible for a lot of people who come here. Mm -hmm. A lot of people who do other things, but what a great opportunity. So here's a pitch, and I want you to add to it. The, the pitch is that, that our biggest ask to the community is if you who live right here, if you haven't been in a while or never been at all, gosh, don't let another year go by before you get a chance to enjoy what happens down at 401 Cottage. You know, I am so pleased with how we fit into the community, how the community embraces Great Plains Theater. It, it's, it's a win-win. Mm -hmm. And, and all, of, of, all of the people that we bring into town to perform here feel like there's a family atmosphere that, that, that they, they literally, well, Matt Walsh, who was in all three shows last year? Right. Everybody loves Matt. He's back doing the trifecta again. He's spending the whole summer well, with us terrific. doing all three shows. And that's and, and and actors really, um, uh, many of the actors this summer uh, are are coming back from last year uh, because they literally, as soon as we announced the season, they they were on the phone saying, "Randy, is there a slot? Yeah. We'd love to come back to Abilene." Yeah. yeah. Well, for folks who are, who are tuned in to to hear me talk about something about economic development, and and they're surprised that we're talking about theater today. First of all they shouldn't be. <laughs> Second of all, uh, this is what we're doing. Mm -hmm. uh, so you talk about Matt Walsh coming back, other people wanting to come back. These are the things, are the benefit statements of the outreach that comes from the, we still have Great Plains Theater. 
here in Abilene, and it's year 21, 22. Years yeah, of existence? Yeah, 21, well, I'm we're, we're closer, we're, we're 20, the, tw 2019 is 25 years. Oh, well so, then we're past that. 2019 yeah. is 25, yeah, yeah, I think Patty told me that. My bad. <laughs> the fact of the matter is that continuity of 24 years is very important to Abilene, and it's just so much fun. It is. Yeah. You have well, and you know, I, I joke all the time with younger people when I say, well, like the, the Avengers movie that's out now, it's breaking all these box office mm -hmm. records. And you can go and you can put on 3D glasses and have this terrific yeah. 3D experience. Well, yeah. I always say, you don't have to put on glasses. <laughs> we are 3D. That's that right. We perform all summer live theater. And yeah. what we do in that little environment, 150 seats mm -hmm. and all that talent crap crammed yeah. into that environment with you creates something that I don't think can be captured in another in medium. I would agree. It's a very special environment to be. You feel the emotions. We, we actually, uh, our, our, our catchphrase that we're marketing on this year is, to, together we are more. Together and and that's what more. we believe here Love at Great that. Plains Theater, that, that. that the audiences are part of what we're doing, because mm -hmm. it's a rehearsal without an audience. It's mm -hmm. a performance with an audience. Yeah. Each one is unique. We only do each show nine times. And during that nine times, it's a special environment that we perform, that when they start teaching people to, to do theater, they sometimes say, you know, do this to the back wall. And then when, I, when I'm directing, I say, no, back walls don't buy tickets. Yeah. Those people that yeah. come to share this environment, with, be in our environment, you do it for those people. And they should walk out feeling like they've had an experience that, that, that changed them and, and was very special. Question and statement, are you doing cabaret? We are. Cabarets on, on uh, every, Friday, every second Friday all summer. Okay, tell them what it is. It's basically after the show, because say in, in Shrek, we have all these people that uh, some of them are that come into town and they play leads, and some of them come into town and they play supporting roles. Well, what you don't always know is that the supporting people are terrific. I mean, everybody that's in a show here brings uh, just a huge raft of talent. And so we do this cabaret on the second Friday where uh, the people... I mean, Sometimes the leads do something, mm -hmm. but, but the people that are in the smaller roles perform, and so you get to see that everybody that we bring to Abilene brings a huge amount of talent, and we also feature some of our Academy kids. Don't have to pay extra for nope. that. Nope, it's after the, after the show. You just hang around for about 20 minutes. They run back, they get out of costume, come yeah. back out, and we, we, we share a different side of getting to know our actors. It is one of the best things about theater for me because I had no exposure to any of this before, and I have learned that almost any topic on the stage, I'm going to enjoy, mm -hmm. because it's live. That's what does it, that interaction mm -hmm. does it for me. But the cabaret, where those people change their costumes and all of the cast gets a chance if they want, gives you such a wide view of mm -hmm. entertainment and, and talent, it's just, to me, it's awe-inspiring to, to sit there in the cabaret. And I've watched our crowds grow mm -hmm. as people have, well, I'm not too tired. I think I'll stay for a while. Uh -huh. And then, you know, they stay to the end. Yep. That's just terrific. Great opportunity. So when you're planning your opening night or your second Friday night show to come here to Great Plains Theater, you might want to take a little nap earlier in the day and stay all the way through the cabaret. Yep. Second Fridays, cabaret after the show. Okay. All right. Uh, what else? What else haven't we said about I Great Plains Theater? It's, and it's, it's, it's a really exciting season. The, the, this year, it's a, we're starting with a with a premiere. Uh, that literally this version of Camelot we're doing is not available in the United States right now. Okay. So you, you can see it in Iowa if you were there, and you can see it in Kansas Can't if you're here. Can't see it on Broadway, New nope, York? Nope, it's going to be opening up in, in the United States in the next few months. But okay. right now, we were the first ones to get it. Okay. So this new version of Camelot here in June, then Lion in Winter in July, which is the, a really fun play with intrigue and, and a, a thriller and, and some fun moments. It was a very famous movie with Peter O'Toole and Katherine Hepburn. If you were an Oscar yeah. winning movie. So it's a, it's a great thing to share. And then Shrek the musical, and then closing with Not Another Christmas so Letter. So this is a shameless plug to people to come opening night. So, uh, you know, in marketing, mm -hmm. uh, the best gets thrown around a lot. Uh -huh. And because it's so subjective, mm -hmm. right? I, different view of best, different view of best. There's only one first. That's true. No matter how many times it's done, there's only one first. So this cooperative project between you and the great 
Old Creamery, Old Creamery and the Amanis. Mm -hmm. And we need to tell the Amanis story, but we can't because we're out of time. Uh. But you can ask us about it next time we're on camera. But it's the first mm -hmm. opportunity for people to see this version of Camelot. Absolutely. And they can come to Great Plains Theater opening night, June 8th. It'll be so much fun. We'll be here looking for you. All right. I'm Dennis Weiss. I work for Eagle Communications. This is Randy West. He's an artistic director here at Great Plains Theater and brings you great things like Camelot. Looking for you there. Have a great day.